Hello, welcome to my latest video. In this video, you are going to be finding the area of parallelograms in grids. There will be a separate video for finding the area of a parallelogram if it is not in a grid, but this one is if they are in a grid, okay? I'm going to start out showing you a different way to find the area of a parallelogram in a grid, but this is not the way we're emphasizing. I'm doing this because it explains the other way. So let me get started on this way, but remember this is not the way we're going to be doing it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this triangle. This triangle, cut it out of this shape. I'm going to move it up to here and that moves it up to here, and you can see that what I've made is a rectangle. And this rectangle is four by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Four by nine. So to get this area, I'll do four times nine equals 36. Now the area of the original parallelogram should still be 36 because I haven't cut out anything or added anything. I've just taken a piece of it and moved it. I haven't created more area or taken away any of the existing area. All I've done is move it around. Okay, so now that again was not the way we're going to do it. See, here's this parallelogram. All I want to do, it's the same one. I want it to be four times nine. Still four, still nine, but I don't want to make it a rectangle. So what is that four and what is that nine? Well, that four is the base of the, tri of the parallelogram and the nine is the height. So really all I'm doing is base times height. And you might say to me, how is that for the base? It's not at the bottom. And I would say to you, bases are not at the bottom. And that's how it can be. Bases, bases are one of the sides of the parallelogram. So I have four sides. I have this side. I have this side, I have this side, and I have this side. So I could choose any of those four to be the base of my parallelogram. It doesn't matter which one I choose. However, two of them are not any good to pick when they're in a, in a grid like this. So the two that are not good are this one and this one. And the reason they're not good is they are not along the grid lines. I can't tell how long that is. If I have a line segment that's along a grid line like this, it's easy to, for, for me to say that that's three. If I have a grid line that's along the, if I have a line segment that's along the grid line like that, it's easy for me to say that that's four. But this side, if it's not along the grid line, now I know how to do that because I know the Pythagorean theorem. You haven't learned the Pythagorean theorem yet and it's a pain to use. So don't use it. Don't use a side that's not along the grid line. Only use a side that's along the grid line. So I have two choices that are along the grid line here. I have the one that I picked and I have this one over here. And you could say to me, which one should I use, the one on the left or the one on the right? And I would say it doesn't matter because this is also four. See how it's four? So it doesn't matter which of those two you use. You could pick either one because they are along the grid line. Then the height. If the base is one of the sides of the parallelogram, what's the height? Well, it's not the distance from the top to the bottom because this nine is not from the top to the bottom. What it is, is a distance. It's the distance from the base to the other side. So I could start here at my base and I haven't made it to the other side yet. So I'm gonna continue. 
and I still haven't made it to the other side yet. So then I'll continue. Now I've made it to the other side, and that height is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The height is nine, and I could draw it there, and I would have nine. Or I could draw it over here, and that would be nine. Or I could draw it over here, and that would be nine. And it doesn't matter which one you use. You just have to have one of them, and you have to find the distance, and that distance is nine. So the area of this is just base times height. Four is the base, nine is the height. Four times nine is 36, and this is 36 square units of area. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so let's do another parallelogram. Which side should I use as the base? Well, I want ones that are along the grid lines. Is this along the grid lines? No, it's at an oblique angle. Is this along the grid lines? No, it's at an oblique angle. Is this along the grid lines? Yes, I could use that. Is this along the grid lines? Yes, I could also use that. Which one do I want to use? It doesn't matter. They're the same length. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This side's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This side's nine. It doesn't matter which one you use. I'll use the one at the top, but it doesn't matter. So the base is nine. The height, remember, is the distance from that base to the other side. So I'll start at that base and I'll go over here. Have I gotten to the other side yet? No. So I'll keep going. Have I gotten to the other side yet? No. Have I gotten to the other side yet? Yes. And that's four. One, two, three, four. The height is four. And how do you get the area? Nine times four. Nine times four is 36 square units. Do you get the idea? It's the base times the height. The base is one of the sides of the parallelogram and you need to find a side that runs along the grid lines. The height is the distance from that base to the other side. Then you just multiply the base times the height. Notice, by the way, that they're at a right angle to each other. Make sure they're at a right angle. So that's finding the area of a parallelogram if it's in a grid. I hope it makes sense. See you next time.